What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today's video is all about making a synthwave track on the Roland Verslab MV1. I'm going to walk you through the ins and outs of how I put the song together and at the very end play the full song. So without any further introduction, let's jump into the device. All right, so first of all, here is the unprocessed full beat. So let's break that down piece by piece here because there's quite a bit going on, but it actually isn't all that complicated. I should mention this is using 100% stock sounds built into this device. I still haven't gotten around to loading any external wave files in yet. I haven't really needed to. I've got plenty of stuff on here already. So this is one of the built-in kicks um, in the drums section. So it's just a one shot, just one track taken up by this only. That way I have maximum ability to process this independently of the other drums in post. The same does not apply to the rest of the drums. They all live on one track. So this is a modified version of one of the kits. That's just uh, the built-in like 808 kit. I haven't modified much of it. I've used this hi-hat, this cowbell, this clap, I have gone in and turned both of these down because remember your hi-hats are always too loud. And this is just doing a pretty simple little pattern. So here's uh, all the drums by themselves. Also got that cross stick in there. With that is the bass, but I'm actually gonna get back to that because let's get into what really sparked the track, which is this part right here. This is some absolutely classic Roland synthesis. I love how this sounds so freaking much. So this is actually just one note at a time. There's like a chord thing built into the patch itself. And the scale here is by default chromatic. And in this case, I just rolled with it. I end up coming up with kind of weird stuff when working with uh, chromatic notes laid out over a grid like this. And this is no exception. I immediately put in that fairly spicy chord and that kind of set the tone for the rest of the track. So underneath this is the bass. This is fun. This is a, a Juno style bass. It sounds super nice. The part that I'm playing is pretty much just following what this instrument track is doing with the arpeggiator turned on. And let's see which style this is. This is style 43. just straight ahead 16th notes, although there is quite a bit of that. There are some little alterations in velocity going on in this kind of pattern that the arpeggiator has given me. And it's got these starts and stop that create some rhythmic interest. And I didn't really modify any of this at all once the arpeggiator gave it to me. I thought it was cool as is. Like my original intention was just to have a rolling bass line that just went on and on and on. And you can do that with the arpeggiator, but I happened to land on one that was a little less straight ahead and it ended up adding quite a bit to the track. So let me play the kick and the bass together. Bring in the chords. That is the foundation of our track. That's the main groove going on here. This is a perfect place to start building. I should also quickly draw your attention to, to the fact that the bass and the kick are clashing a little bit. Like there's a bit of kind of phasing and frequency masking going on here. In post, I uh, ducked the bass to the kick. And that really helped to bring out the punch of not only those two elements, but the entire song. So let's add another element. <laughs> This is living on the snare track because the snare track and the hi-hat track and all these can become like tone tracks and kit tracks and whatnot. 
I just can't have an arpeggiator track on any of these. And that's fine. This is just some basic pads, and so it doesn't need to be arpeggiated. I didn't play this with the chords either. I just manually selected my notes. Pretty simple patch, just fills out the entire arrangement, adds some ambience. And then in post, I ended up adding the baby audio plugin spaced out with some kind of reversed hazy delay. And that really brought this to life even further. Next up. The lead. This is a really fun patch. I've gone in after the fact and added in that vibrato. I've showed this in a previous video. This is a trick I use all the time, especially on Roland patches, but I'll show it again. Go to tone setting. And this is where you get access to uh, a lot of parameters of the synthesis engine, including vibrato rate, which I've turned up a little bit, uh, vibrato depth, which I've turned up quite a bit, and then vibrato delay, which controls when the vibrato kicks in, whether it's immediately or in this case, it plays the note straight ahead and then slowly brings in the vibrato. So the longer that the note holds out, the more vibrato you get. Really adds some expressiveness to this part. And once again, this is all chromatic, so. There's that little turnaround at the very end that I think sounds super cool. It's almost like triumphant in a way. And uh, that's something I probably wouldn't have come up with if I wasn't working on this pad layout and working with this specific patch. You'll also notice it is fairly dry. Once again, I make tracks on here with the knowledge that I'm going to mix them in my DAW. And so I ended up adding just a subtle amount of reverb in post, but I like it being fairly dry and in your face in this case. So these are kind of your main melodic elements. <laughs> That is a fairly dense mix. And to throw one more element into it, we've got the actual arpeggio track. This one came after the lead and very much follows uh, what the lead is doing. So in this case, I do have the actual arpeggiator turned on. So let me go to style. I don't remember exactly what notes I played. I can play through this real quick. Pay attention to the pads that turn green. But once again, I played this with the arpeggiator and noticed that it actually like encodes what the arpeggiator did into the step sequencer, which is interesting. That definitely gives you some control, which is nice. This I also did with the express intention of automating a high cut filter to slowly open up uh, over different sections of the song, like bring this thing in slowly uh, to build up energy and to make this thing more and more apparent over time. There's a lot of stuff kind of living in the same frequency spectrum. And so one really fun thing is the moment that uh, the lead jumps an octave. That really brings the energy up. That's the climax of the track. And I think that's a really fun little element. Simple, but I think it really works. And then I should quickly mention in terms of how I've arranged this, I've got, uh, these are the main sections. And then as I usually do, I took the main section, copied it a bunch of times and started removing stuff. So you've got this, just the chords, chords and bass. We've brought in some drums. Also notice there's a different pattern with just the hi-hat full, more complex drums, and that ARP is in there. Bear in mind, it's going to be brought in slowly, not all at once. Introduce the main melody. Build. And that's your full section. I think this is just a straight up copy of this. And then this is an octave up. And then we end up going back into this which is a bunch of the elements minus the lead. So we're winding the song down. 
and then we're winding the song down further. So with a full song structure fleshed out, I recorded this into my DAW multi-track over USB as per usual, mixed it, and you can hear the final result of that right now. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this song and this video and would like to see me make more music on the Roland Verse Lab MV1, you can click or tap the videos over here. Hopefully you enjoy those. And as always, I'll be back with a new electronic music production focused video in a little bit.